Welcome to Rad Chat. I'm your host, Bernie Lynn, and we are still on Zoom, guys, because there's still a pandemic. Before we get started today, I do want to give a shout out to this awesome sweater I'm wearing. It is spooky season, wake, slay, repeat, or they have another profile called Keep It Spooky, where you can get this awesome all of the Halloween-esque movies streets. So hit them up. Also, if you use my code, that's rad, you'll get 30% off. Cool. So my special guest today is Ray McGear, and he is the basis of the Painted Young Band. Also, he is a hockey goalie. So super interesting stuff to talk about. So welcome. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been a long, very long while. I know. So for people that don't know, we do know each other. Um, Ray is currently in New Jersey, whereas I'm where that is, that is where I'm from originally, <laughs> and I'm in California, um, but we had met, I guess we should start with the story how we met, so we met because we were both emo kids who would go to Warp Tour all the time, still are. We're still are. it was Warp Tour, right, Warp Tour was the first one, no, it, um, it was Bamboozle, oh, okay, okay, so for people and that don't one, know, Bamboozle yeah. is like almost a warp Tour, but it only happened on the East Coast. I think the West Coast had a different, like, Bamboozle left, but it wasn't yeah. as cool. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you're right, because it was Bamboozle Skate and Surf. Yeah, so... And that was the weird one at Six Flags, Yeah, right? yeah, so originally, for, you know, to put it all in the context, it started out as Skate and Surf on the Asbury Park Boardwalk. They had, you know, multiple stages, just like warp Tour. Uh, all that fun stuff. And then it got so big that they ended up doing it at, um, in the parking lot of the Meadowlands, like the old giant stadium. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then they were, I think they were trying to move it back to Asbury, but then, or no, 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 it was actually, it was supposed to be, I don't know if you ever went there, but it was, um, they did have it in uh, Asbury though. That's when no, they, bought, it was, you played. they were supposed to have it at that. I play America and freehold. Oh, and then they were like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you're this, right. Like, and it changed too minute. big. They moved it to Six Flags. Dude, that was like a whole drama, too. Yeah. And then it was oh, because of so the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Jeff Crespi. Yes, Jeff Crespi. Shout out. We'll put him like, uh, I'll like tag it somewhere down here. But best. dude, yes, shout out to the Jeff. Best. Also, we should probably start of who Jeff is. So if yeah. you're a New Jersey band kid, I guess I would say band emo, like in scene kid. You know who Jeff Crespi is because if you ever went to Starlin Ballroom, if you ever went to VFW shows, or he's Don't from your me. area. Yeah. Um, I wasn't from Freehold, but I would always hang out because that's where all the concert venues were. Yeah. And you knew Jeff Crespi because he was the guy by the security taking all the photos of the crowds and the crowd surfers, and he was the super nicest guy. He always, in the beginning, he had his son with him. Most of you might know him without a shirt on. He did that for a, lo a long time in the summers. <laughs> I love Jeff. If you followed me on Facebook, you know I have tons of photos with him. He was always the raddest dude. And so, yeah, you're still right. Good. Because of Jeff, good. you knew him too. And I already yeah. knew him. So I think we both, like, came in the same contact that way. Yeah, it was just, like, I think, cause I don't know if, like, did you, like, did he drive you? Oh, you know what? That might have been the time I yeah. went with him. Yeah. yeah you went with him. Oh, I went to so many concerts so hard because there was a time I stayed with him and eat at, his, at his house with his family for a Census Fails concert at yeah, Starlin. Yeah. But you're right. I think I also, because I was having maybe car issues or something, but I think I also went to, with him to that. Oh my God, you're yeah. right. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. And then you we guys, had like, you guys were, dinner at his you guys house. Because you guys were leaving. Yeah. And then, like, um yeah and then like I just like you know said bye to everybody and then like and then you were there and I'm like oh hi like how are so you funny. like yeah oh my god yeah wow yeah. you remember the story better than I do <laughs> yeah I uh, everyone, th boys. everyone says I have a really good memory so I want to say that was probably 2009 I want to say my skate and surf t-shirt is 2009 maybe it was, two, it was maybe it might have been 2010 or 2011 because that next year 2012 that was my senior year of high school that's when it went back oh. to Asbury. oh okay okay oh yeah yeah okay so I was still yeah because you're like a year or so older than me right yeah yeah okay oh my god how crazy so anyways guys for watching this like 
trip down memory lane. We've known each other for quite a long time. If you guys know that skate and surf festival, you know that time range. And if you know New Jersey rock scene, you do know Jeff Crespi rocks. So That's thanks, exactly. Jeff, because then we became friends. And like, and, and we wouldn't be here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for people that don't know, like, if you're not in the music scene or like the emo, I call us like emo kids still. Emo's yeah. not dead. Um, then you kind of know there's like a community of people. So if you know people of people, you just become friends with this community. I always called them my show friends. Like I didn't, I was bullied in high school and I didn't have a lot of friends, but I always had my show friends who like supported me and like Facebook friends. And that's when like Facebook was more popular than Instagram. Yeah. And so I always loved my show friends. So yeah, like that's how we became friends at first. So how crazy like years later, we're still friends. So, yeah. super cool trip down memory lane. So that is our introduction of Ray. That's how I know him, guys. But he also does a lot of cool shit post me moving from New Jersey. Like, you've gotten into so many things. Like, you were always into music when I met you. But tell us, let's take the trip of how you became a musician, why you chose bass. Let's just start there. All right. So, um, this for me, it was probably right around eighth grade. Uh, that's when I... I had like kind of been into music, um, like just, just listening. So like, um, around that time, um, I think we were just like cleaning out my house for whatever reason. And I found an acoustic guitar that my dad had owned and I'm like, Hey, like I didn't even know you played guitar. And he was like, yeah, you know, like I was in a band when I was in like seventh or eighth grade, we did our, um, it was, uh, like their, their eighth grade, um, like, uh, you know, not graduate, like kind of like they're like a prom or like a formal, formal. Rather. Okay. Okay. And so like they played, um, he played in, he played in a band, um, when he was at that age, um, I found the guitar and I just like, I just wanted to learn. Cause like, I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. Like wait, before I go any further, is it okay to swear on the show? Oh yeah. Yeah. Go okay. ahead. We're just on YouTube. So, like, I, so, like, I, like, I thought, I thought that was like yeah, the coolest no. thing. I like curse all the time. You're fine. <laughs> all good. Um, I just want to make sure. You know, yeah, so you thanks for being You don't have to edit and like keep it out everywhere. You know, just beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Um, right. I don't even know so, how to do that. Like my editing skills aren't that great. Um, so <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> all good. <laughs> exactly. So I just thought that was the coolest thing. And um, I picked up the guitar. Um, there was a website called ultimateguitar.com that had like, I couldn't read music. Like I had no idea how to, but it had a tablature. So it basically said like this string, third fret, this string, fifth fret. Like that's, that's the chord. Like you just yeah. play that. And then I then was off of reading those. I would just try and like listen to a song and just try and like figure it out myself. And um, I ended up like just, you know, I got like decent enough to where I could start playing like kind of easy, like pretty basic songs. Like, I don't know, it was like that era was uh like maybe I don't know if an American idiot was was out then. But yes, like, Green had, Day. Um, uh like bowling for soup. Um mm -hmm. but I was also into like that was like the it's a little cringy now, but like I was super into like Avenge Sevenfold and Bullet for my Valentine. Why is that so cringy? Cool. Avenge well, Sevenfold is amazing. No, no, they I mean yeah, they, oh they're they're all like they were like I thought that they were like gods, especially yeah. like, it, was, it was them and Bull from my Valentine. Like they were at like I love the, bullets too. <laughs> like that was like peak, um, you know. At least like that's what introduced me into heavier music, and then I got it. Then from there into bands like A Day to Remember, Attack Attack, Under Oath. Yes. Um, like yes. the you know the 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 top tier of like you know like the metalcore um, music, and his thing my dad's thing with me was you got to learn on the acoustic and then we'll get you an electric guitar so i did that got an electric guitar for my birthday one year um and a buddy of mine who i went to middle school with he had a he was trying to like start a band and he was like i can't find bass players anywhere so i was like fuck it i'll do it <laughs> and we went to some little why not like, yeah, we went to, my dad and I went to some little, like, I don't know, it was like a pawn shop right near my house, bought a bass for like 75 bucks, hmm. learned, um, 
figure that out. And then, um, and then from there, I, I just, it, it ended up not working. And then I went back to like playing guitar full time. And then once high school, um, came around, um, I was, I kind of wanted to start a band and I was just like looking for people and then like through friends or friends of friends. And I ended up starting a band that, um, I think I was in for probably the first two, maybe even three years of high school. Oh, wow. Um, what was that band called? That was, it, it, it was originally called, I believe it was the silence. And then we were called <laughs> to kill a coward. Our <laughs> vocalist was actually, um, uh, Jamin Lyons, he, uh, he, um, he actually kind of was like YouTube famous. Like he, he oh, like, his thing was like teaching people how to scream. And okay, okay. I don't, I actually, that's, I, a, I, that's a technique they say. Like, oh, it is. It's insane. That like, level of um, your voice. oh my God, it's, it was insane. But like, I used to watch his videos and I never thought that I had no idea that he lived in Jersey. Oh, okay. So, funny. One, so one of my buddies in high school, was like, hey, like, I know this kid, like, he's, like, kind of big on YouTube. I'm like, wait, that kid? Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, I, like, went to, like, preschool with him. I'm like, what? Oh, why are you just telling me this now? So Isn't that such band, a small world? Exactly, yeah. And, like, with that band, like, um, especially, like, for a first band, like, that was, like, awesome, at least for me, because, like, we were, we were a really tight band. Like, we... I mean, we practiced pretty often. We, um, we were, we were all like one collective unit when it came to writing, practicing everything that, you know, it, you have to do in a band. Yeah. And through that band, we actually got to, um, we actually got to play Starland Ballroom. Uh, oh, shit. Like, yeah. We were in no this way. thing. Um, yeah. We were in this, um, this contest. Um, so it was the booking company was called Jersey Shows. Okay, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they like, do, like, you, the breaks and stuff, like, the great contests and stuff, right? Uh, no, that that was different. That mm -hmm. that wasn't Jersey shows, but that was, like, <clears throat> we, we did the break contest. We ended up not um, advancing in that, but through the showdown, basically what it was, I mean, it, it was more so, like, a money grab on, like, hey, if you could sell 100 tickets, you win. So, like, yeah. we sold a bunch of tickets. We, like, we still played really well, but the first two rounds of the contest were at your, like, you know, home venue. Mm -hmm. So for us, that was the Saint in Asbury Park. You know, mm -hmm. you know little little hole in the wall place. Then from there, um, we won first place in the first round, and then we took third place in the second round. But since we placed, we got to go to Starland. Oh shit, and dude, that's so rad! That was that's yeah. still my favorite venue of all time. Like nothing yeah. will ever beat Starland Ballroom. To yeah, me. yeah, it was the best. It still is. Um, and then we ended up reaching the finals in that. And I think we, we finished like, it was like 12th out of the 14 bands that were in the final, but we were the last like metal band that was in it. And like, oh, there okay. were some, like, there were some great, great bands that, that end that ended up, um, you know, advancing and winning in it. And I think you may, you might remember the one, um, sexy heroes. Oh my god, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I promoted them. Yeah, 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 so... Oh my god, how awkward that, like, I probably was promoting them over here. Oh my god. <laughs> I literally, I don't know if you remember, but, like, me, my uh, two other girlfriends, and our guy friend, we all dressed up in the caves and, like, ran around for them. Dude, I was, that's probably why I had no friends in high school. We had that, yeah. I don't know, maybe that was also, maybe you did that before we started promoting them, but yeah. I we we saw them at one of those contests really were cool with them became really good friends with the guys in the band and then we just started like, fuck it let's just have some fun and then we started yeah. doing that outfit like the yellow shirt the black capes yeah and then like the the mm -hmm. um the uh the suspenders and everything the bow tie yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. oh my gosh yeah. shout out sexy heroes yeah, no they were they were awesome and like we we're like we we're all standing like like if you're looking at the stage, you know how like they have the two bars on the on each side. We were mm -hmm. on like that little left bar, and we're okay. just sitting there watching them, and we're just like, we have no shot at winning this. <laughs> like, it was, they like, were they, they were on. I mean, they, obviously, they knew like, how to put on a good show. Yeah. They had that like charisma to them too. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, they were. But also, I think they already had a few albums out when they were doing that. Like, they already had those, like, EPs. Yeah, like, we were, I mean, they were probably, like, in their mid-20s. We were, like, 16, 17. Yeah, so that's a lot to show for, that you're so young, getting to play the biggest, like, concert venue in Jersey, pretty in Southern Jersey, at least. Yeah, that that was, uh, I'm, I haven't been able to play there since, but, um, I mean, obviously, like, going to shows at Starland, you're just, like, it, it's it's almost like, and you, you could even take this um, as, like, you know, you and I, we were both, like, kind of made fun of in high school for what we did with music, but, like, you, you use it as a release, like, mm-hmm. going to shows, playing mm-hmm. shows, like, you know, for me, like, if I had a shitty week at school, but I had a show on Saturday, like, I'm letting it all out, like, that yeah. was... Mm -hmm. That was basically, you know, like you're working for the weekend, but that was like, that was, that was it for us. And, and that's a good point to make because so for you, you were the musician, you let your, you know, whatever happened in your life out playing music. And I'm like the opposite. I was the person that wishes she could play music, but I'm just in the crowd. And so yeah. I let my release out in the crowd, like crowd surfing and mosh yeah. pit. And I was like, a literally crazy like crazy girl. I, th- I feel like there were a couple warp tours where like I-, I I couldn't tell you who was playing but like I'm like standing like right in the middle of the crowd like right up and up at the barrier and then some foot just smacks me in the face and I look up and it's you like, <laughs> you always knew by the color of my leggings that year yeah yep because you would always post it like the week before you're like hey am I doing red am I doing purple am I doing blue yeah. am I doing orange and it like, would be like I don't know why but like it's kind of funny because now it's like transitioned from that time in my life where I was like known as the rad girl at work tour because I would wear the sports bra and I'd yeah, yeah. Leggings, and Just people like, would like look for me so I used yeah. to think I was so cool at work tour like a cool girl and then I was like really? when I decided to do the podcast I was like I have to have rad in my podcast because that's just who I am yeah, it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be you if it wasn't that. Right. But bring it kind of back to like when you first started learning to play instrument, how how is the process of learning like reading music and learning what the notes are? Like did it come naturally to you or like you know, having your dad's support was really helpful? So and to preface this, actually I don't read music at all. Oh, okay. So interesting, but but um, I I have a really good ear for music. So like, if I hear a song on the radio, I know like, okay, that's this chord, that chord, this, that, and the other thing. Like, I could like hum out a melody and just be like, okay, it's in this key. I should be playing in this. Play that and whatever. Um, but just learning, like, even like with the tabs, it was pretty easy. But I knew if I like wanted to get better, like I should try and read music. So like I. I took guitar lessons in high school. There was a school two blocks away from my high school. So they like, I I got the basic understanding of it. But then when both the teacher and I realized like, Hey, like reading music might not be your thing, but let's teach you more theory. So you can take that into songwriting. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me. Um, Going into theory, it's like, you know, you have this key and you know, it's a major key relative minor is this you play these scales in this key and then you can just kind of go off of that um and then structure wise like hey you know you have verse one is this progression you have a pre-chorus here chorus and then this is what you're doing throughout the whole whole thing and then that Mm -hmm. just goes into you know building up um a song pretty much from like the ground up it's just like hey you have this melody and then just kind of take it from there Yeah, that's super interesting because you think you would assume people all read music and then that's how they create music. But that's actually super interesting to know that you just do it all by hearing it and then just knowing the theory behind music. That is like really super interesting. Yeah, it's um, it's it's almost kind of how I that's how kind of I would work when it came to like learning my band's songs. So like through that like that website that ultimate guitar thing they also made programs where you can go in and like if you're writing a song you could actually like tab it out on a thing Mm -hmm. and then you actually can basically play it from there if it has if the if it's a thing that goes like do 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 you 
basically just plug it in on your computer. And then if you know theory well enough, like, you know, like this is an eighth note, quarter note, whole note. And then the, the tab program will actually just map it out for you. So that like, this is what you're playing and basically how it's supposed to sound. Yeah. But, but I would still like, I, I would just learn everything by ear. Like, and then I would take it, I would then go to a practice. We practice the song and then I ask like, Hey, like, am I doing this right? Um, I think I can do this here, but how is this? And just kind of. Wow. That's so interesting. Do you think in all the different bands and currently your current band that that has really helped you in a sense, or has there been a struggle with it where maybe not everyone in the band does it that way? Um, every band is different. So, um, in like more recent bands, um, basically, uh, my one, the one band I was in previously, um, Idle Minds, which I'm actually rocking the shirt right now. Um, hey, shout out. Yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're, I don't know if they're, they keep teasing a comeback, but like, I, if it happens, that'd be awesome. But if they um, come back, will you go back with them? Um, I don't know. Like if it may just be like two or three of the guys and then like, they're just going to write stuff and put it out. So, mm-hmm. but um our two guitarists and our drummer they actually would write all the songs on those tab programs and basically you know if i write a guitar part on the tab program i can send it to the drummer he tabs out his drum parts he sends it to the next guy and the next guy and then you just build the song from there you learn it and then when we go to practice it's like you already know how it's supposed to go but I I never figured out the tab program, so like they would always give me shit because like, mm-hmm. yo, you have to put your bass part in here. I'm like, I'm good, like I got it, like you know. But <laughs> then, it, with Painted Young, um, I'll get into it like a little later on. But basically, when we write stuff, it's mainly our singer Chris because um, he plays guitar too. But we all have like little setups like this. Like I could after this call, like I could literally just plug in an interface, plug a guitar into the computer and just record something. So he'll do that, send it to us and we'll bounce it back. Like, Hey, you know, this is pretty cool here. Um, but maybe change this and add something into here. So that's every band's a little different. Some, some bands will literally just, they'll spend two hours in a practice and just, they won't practice anything. They'll just write Mm -hmm. and kind of just jam ideas, like just kind of bounce things back and forth between, whether it's three guys, four or five, you know, however many people are in the band. Um, it, it ends up becoming like in, in each way to their own, it's, it's still a collective thing, Yeah. but everyone does. It differently. Yeah. I feel like I just am so interested in the process of bands and music that I feel like I have so many questions. <laughs> so no, that's really cool more. to learn like, that not everything is kind of how an outsider could assume it could be like people hear things different do their own parts and now there's so much technology that I'm sure it makes it easier to like like you said like you can jump on zoom or you can like just email someone the part or like there's all these programs now so I'm sure that has just also transcended from your first band experience a hundred percent like like with the first band, like we had the tab programs and, and even to like our vocalist, like he, he was really, really good with theory. So he could like, he couldn't really necessarily play a lot of the parts, but Nick, the guitar, the other guitarist and I, cause I was playing guitar in that band, like we could play the parts. He would basically just tab it out and say like, Hey, learn this. And we're like, mm-hmm. okay. And then, you know, in bands after that, um, like some, some bands were still using the tab program. Um, like, it's, like with idle minds. And then, the other kind of heavier band I was in uh, previously uh, called Life Itself, shout out to them. They, um, I, the EP that they have out, I wrote pretty much entirely like just in my bedroom. Just, I like, mm-hmm. I learned how to program drums. I pieced everything together. I sent it to, our, to Sean, the vocalist. He would write out to it and then he would come over to my house and, and demo out vocals. And that band literally started as kind of just like an internet band like like hey like it's literally just the two of us like we have some songs like you know pretty cool like just check them out and then people started asking us to play shows and we're like can't really play with the vocalist and a guitarist so uh, we ended up 
Yeah, we ended up like, you know, we, um, we got, we got some friends of ours to like, to learn the parts and fill in. Um, and, and then, you know, that was starting to gain a lot of traction. Um, and, and, um, like right after the EP, I, I decided to take a step back from that. And, and even, and even now, like they're, they just put out a single with, um, uh, what's, uh, with Brian, the vocalist of the band Currents. Like, oh, they're, they're, okay. yeah, they're, they're like one of the bigger bands in, in metalcore yeah. now. And That's they're, cool. yeah. And, and how that band even started was like, it'll, we'll go into the hockey thing, but, uh, Sean, the vocalist also plays hockey and oh. him and I, we still, play, we still play together like once a week if, you know, as long as like work schedules and everything. Um, but that's how you guys met. And I was working at a hockey shop near my house and he came in to buy skates and he was wearing like, like a, I, I forget what shirt he was wearing, but he's wearing like a, it might've been like a Double Wrist Prada shirt. And I'm like, oh, like, oh okay. I like Prada. And we just started talking we were talk- and then I was actually in Idle Minds at the time when I was writing all the Life Itself stuff. And he actually, con- like, he liked the Idle Minds Facebook page. Oh, and that's so he- nice. he commented on one of our posts, like, which one of you guys works at the sports exchange? And then whoever was running the account just tagged me in it. And he messaged me. He was like, hey, I see that you're writing stuff. I want to get into I want to start something like I want to end up doing something. So oh my God, that's so cool. Like just, yeah. the, just the process of meeting people and like starting music together. Is cool. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then that, that just kind of took off from there. And, um, and, and everybody in these previous bands, like I'm still like, we're all like pretty much brothers now. Like oh, I, awesome. I got to tour with idol, got to do some pretty cool stuff with life itself. Like we went to, we got to the chance to record at like one of the bigger studios in New Jersey. Um, oh, dope. It was kind of up. Cause where were you in Jersey? You were like, it was like, I was in, yeah, I was in Parsippany. I don't know so, if you know where that so, is. Cause the studio that we recorded at was in uh, Belleville. I think. Okay. That's a little, I think kind it's kind of far. I know a tattoo shop in Belleville. Um, but it's not that close. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was like up near your area, but like, but, but there like, is a, there is a recording studio, I think in my area, because I remember a lot of people talking, maybe yeah. there's one in Wayne. Is there one in Wayne? Uh, there might be. It's or maybe uh, Rockaway. Didn't, didn't Jonathan work at the one in Rockaway? I don't know if you know who he was. He was like in the scene too. And I think he's maybe, an engineer. Yeah. In yeah, no, there, there's one a little further up. Um, but the one in Belleville, it's like, um, it used to be called the machine shop. It's now called, um, graphic nature audio. Okay. And the, the guy who used to run it, um, his name's Will Putney. He's in, he's in the band, um, fit for an autopsy. Like they're one of like the biggest bands, but now he, he, his, his big thing now is he's like the biggest producer in metalcore. Like he, Oh wow. Everybody goes there. So like he, he had, he records counterparts. He just did the new ghost inside record. He oh, did shit. all in New Jersey. Yeah. And he did oh. um, uh, straight from the path. He did um, invent animate. He did um, uh, knock loose. Like, Oh wow. Like he's, he's tracked That's a so big bands. wide variety of bands. That's, yeah. And like, and, and basically like, and now, and now actually one of my good buddies, Matt is like pretty much like the head engineer there now. So yeah. like we tracked, we tracked everything with Matt. Cause obviously with Will, it was like, it, it's, he's very, very expensive. So Matt, like, you know, he worked, he worked out a deal with us. Um, everything went so smoothly. Like he, he's got such a good ear for like, I would track a part and then be like, Hey, add this in here and it was like even if it was just one tiny little thing it made the part sound so much bigger and that's why i love working with so many different uh like musicians producers uh just various artists like it you get so much from everybody else like even if it's the smallest thing it it could make it can make for you know it could complete a song yeah that's so that's so crazy to like the experience of like coming together and just listening to music as your band and the collaborating there but then when you go to the studio and you have all this higher production and 
and you're working with engineers, that's like a whole nother experience. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's literally day and night. Like we went in there, um, you know, like our, the demos, like we sent him, like, he was like, Hey, like all these are really cool. Like, but I think there's stuff that we can add. So like, like, um, we, cause I programmed all the drums initially before Joe, the drummer would actually record them. So I tracked all my guitars and bass to the, the program drums. And he's like, Hey, like this part here, like let's pan this here and then here and just adding so many little things that once Joe went in and did drums and then Sean was doing vocals, we were able to add like an entire different element to the EP. Yeah. And, and this is the current and, Painted Young you're talking about. Correct? Well, that, that was with Life Itself. But so okay. with Painted Young, yeah. So now with Painted Young, like it's, it's a little more kind of pop alternative. Um, and the producer that we were working with um, was a gentleman by the name of Rob Freeman. Okay. And he was a guitarist. I don't know if you, they might have been a little bit before you, but do you remember the band Hidden in Plain View? It sounds a little familiar. Yeah, so he, so Rob was their guitarist. Okay. But as far as his work in production, he um, he did some production work for Gym Class Heroes. Oh, dope! I love that. And like it, it was it was basically like all the all the songs that had features on. I think it was a Paper Cut Chronicles too. So that had like Stereo Hearts with Adam Levine. Mm. Um, Ask Back Home, um, uh, uh, The Fighter with, um, with Ryan Tedder from One Republic. Mm -hmm. So Rob did all that work. And now he's got, he has a bunch of bands from around here that go to him. And he made, he made the, we've, we've only tracked three songs with him so far. We have to go back and do two, possibly three more, like if it's in the budget. Um, but he, he, made, he made our little demos sound like absolutely massive oh that's awesome after, after, and like and with him it's an entirely different thing because he like he was also doing vocals in hidden in plain view so when chris is tracking vocals rob's literally just sitting at the controller and just like he hums out like a harmony and it's oh, like cool. let's try this and then when chris track it and we're like we're all sitting behind him like holy shit like this oh so that's so dope yeah, yeah. That was That's super cool because like you guys all are in the studio together and then I'm sure like you're all vibing on each other. So when someone's tracking, then the other person's like, oh shit, like we're making a freaking demo right now. Yeah, yeah. And then like, and even too, like when it comes to like writing guitar parts, like, you know, maybe something that I hear Chris and Bailey may, may hear differently. And then I'm like, hey, just try this. We try it. If it works, great. If not, then, you know, you know it didn't hurt to try yeah so but yeah but just working with so many different artists and especially chris and bailey now is um it's basically like a total different game from like everything from really anything else that i've ever done because primarily i was doing heavier music but now with this it's it's a lot more of like i don't want to say like a full-on pop element but mm -hmm. it's a little more like pop rock kind of alternative like so um, kind of like you went like to the day to remember newer day to remember. Uh, in a way, yeah, like probably like I guess the term would be more like radio ish. Okay. So you know, I mean, and it's not a bad K rock thing. as we call it here, which is mm, I don't remember what it's called in New Jersey, but it's called K rock here. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you like take bands now, like, um, like Grayscale's one of like they're one of the biggest bands out now, and like they went from like a more of a pop punk uh, sound to adding a lot more pop elements. So like if you take them and the 1975 and mm -hmm. then like okay. a little mix of like all time low, that's kind of like what we're doing. So like okay. we still have the, the, the older pop punk elements of all time. That like low core rock. rock. Exactly. But then okay. like the Made radio, friendly. but then the production side of the 1975 and, and okay. bands like that. Nice. So for people that may be listening and watching that don't know, what is a demo? Um, well, for everyone, it's, it's a little different. So in our case, a demo would be it's 1 a.m. over here and I'm really bored, but I, an idea pops up in my head that I have to, I track it 
on my computer and then I send it to the guys. That would necessarily be a demo in which like, hey, like we're gonna take this demo, change a couple things up and then maybe make something out of it. For the older term of a demo was like, you know, we, we record five or six songs and then we go to the Freehold VFW and just hand out demos. Like, hey, you know, check out our demo. Mm-hmm. Hey, check out our demo. Hey, check out our demo. The people that wait in line in Warped Tour while you're waiting to get in. It, yeah, exactly. So, like, that... Hey, can you listen to my demo? And they have their earphones and yeah. like, we give them, like, five bucks. Exactly. I gave yeah. countless five bucks to those people. Yeah, no, exactly. And And even, too, like, you can meet so many, like, you can, like, re- remember, like, hey, like, this band was doing the, you know, hey, listen to my demo at the line at Warp Tour. And now they're like a co-headliner on Warp Tour. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, shit, I remember yeah. that. Like, Super dope, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So that's cool, just to kind of clear that up, just in case some people, like, aren't completely sure, since we kind yeah. of dived right into, like, the studio. Yeah. Kind of to go back a little bit. Yeah. So you obviously know how to play guitar, you know how to play bass. How was it to transition from being a guitarist to now being a bassist? And then also, do you have a preference? Um, so in going, in transitioning from guitar to bass, a lot of people just say like, oh, bass only has four strings. Like, mm-hmm. it should be easier. But it's, a, it's more so, I like to go by feel. Okay. So like, if I'm listening to a song and I, and I hear the melody, but then you feel the bass, like you feel the bass line. And that's basically that's kind of what you know really anchors a song is like i follow the what the drums are doing whether it's just like a kick drum pattern like a and then i just play something off of that like a bump 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 bump, or you know or do whatever you know whatever else i want to do yeah and then um and then i i feel it out so like there's there's really no point in me just like taking a bass solo out, out of nowhere because like it, it wouldn't make any sense but like just adding in little um fillers like you know maybe coming out of a chorus into the next verse like instead of just following along the the chord of the guitar i'll do that but then just add like a little line in between and then it resolves which then starts the next verse so i go more for feel on that on that part um for guitar it's it's more so like you want to write something that like that people can remember so like if you're listening to like you know like a, a really iconic guitar riff for us would be uh dirty little secret you just literally know it you you hear that first note and you're like that's dirty little secret mm-hmm. um um, I do anything by simple plan. You hear that? Yep, yep. That's true. That's true. And then, and then you remember that, and it's just then oh, that. Oh, another one. You're on a roll. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one more. Oh man. Um, we. There's I just so many. Brought, I just, just brought it up before. Um, like like holiday, Green Day. Oh, okay. Like yeah. That's that's like, you know, iconic kind of stuff. So. With the guitar parts, like, you want to write something, obviously, like, that you like, you know, as, as the, the writer. Like, you're not going to write something that's like, oh, dude, I hate this. I hate this riff. I hate, I don't want to play this. Like, yeah. you want to, you want, you want to, you want to like it. And obviously, you'd hope that people like it as well. Yeah, that's true. But do you feel like because you started at guitar and it is um, six strings that it was easier to go to bass? Um. I mean, in a way, I mean, it's like, it's, it is a completely different instrument, but it's, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of similarities. It's just like, instead of hearing the guitar, you feel the bass. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. And I asked this because, um, not a lot of people know this, but I actually used to play bass. Um, I was not good. I <laughs> was really bad at rhythm. Um, but my dad had a band and he was a drummer, but he also knew guitar and he knew bass and he yeah. knew everything. And so coming from like a musician in the family, you like felt it upon you to also want to do it. So my sister learned drums and then never followed with it. And then I yeah. learned bass and then 
in the beginning, my dad was supposed to teach me, but he was like fucking douche. So, and then also you're young. I was really young. So I feel like yeah. I tried to do other things and I got out of it. But then when I got like, maybe I was middle school and then maybe like leading back into high school, I was like, oh, I want to learn again. Like I want to maybe have a band. And that was like my yeah. dream. Yeah. And I learned, I like took more serious lessons mm-hmm. and I learned, of course, everyone, I feel like my first song, which I feel like is everyone's first song on the bass was Smoke on the Water. Yeah. I could play that. That was like a good one. It was so hey, freaking easy. Go. Everyone knows go. that one. Yeah, you, got, you gotta start purple, somewhere. Deep Purple. But um, I ended up, I did learn a Cobra Starship song because that was my favorite, but it was wow. so wow. hard. Like, I just remember like having to read the notes and it was so hard. Yeah. Um, but I did used to play bass and I actually thought that guitar was scary because it had six strings and I was already kind of like struggling on four strings. But I have like a weirdly, you can't really see because my background, large hand. So oh. I could really stretch it. So yeah. I was like made for the bass. Yeah. Or or um they call it piano hands. Oh, okay. So I, I do like I'm partial to the bass because I used to play. So I always want to ask like what do you prefer? Oh for sure. But that's the cool thing, like how you broke it up into like yeah. you prefer one because of feeling, you prefer the other because it's more memorable, which is actually a really, really good point. Yeah. So Staying in that topic, now that you're a bassist, and I know just from like when I used to learn or like talking to other people in music, the bassist and the drummer have to be in sync. Like, you know, if they're not in sync, how is it working with your drummer in your band? So with Bailey, and you know, we, we kind of joke about it just because we, we kind of butt heads here and there on stuff. But uh, basically what we do live now, like instead of like, I mean, we're obviously still like a smaller band, but when we play... We, because he also does, um, he does lights and sounds for uh, bar bands. So okay. we actually ended up, um, we we've started playing more with uh, like the in ear monitors. Mm. So like if you go to a show and you see like the singer wearing earplugs, that's actually monitors so they can hear themselves. Okay. And in those in ears, like you know, if you're if you're seeing a band that has like a lot of like kind of like effects like strings or like synths and all that stuff that's not being played live he has on his phone or on like a on an ipad he has what are called backing tracks Mm -hmm. so you split it left and right in the right that's what goes out through like the pa of the venue in the left you hear the metronome the click 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 Mm -hmm. and then um that's what keeps everybody in time so, so we're we're all i mean we all use them so we're all like like we're all in there uh so we're all pretty um we're all pretty like dialed in when it comes so to there's never been like a issue or anything per, yeah 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 nice mm-hmm. so kind of also what you said you just said like sometimes you guys butt heads since you've mentioned you've had a few bands over the years and now your current band, how, and we all know in rock and roll history, bands break up and yeah. craziness. How is it to work with a band? And what are some pros? What are some cons? Like, how do you guys make it work? So, I mean, you all, everybody wants to have like, or everyone has to have like, you have to be on the same level as far as like, you know, like the, the, the commitment, the drive um, to, to, ma- you know, to, to get to whatever point that you're going for, you know, whether it's, you know, you want to sign to a major label, you want to, or you just want to just play shows and have fun. Um, if the commitment's not there, then like, you know, it'll show. Um, the, with working with a bunch of bands, um, you know, you, you see it in different people, like, hey, like, you know, out of these five people, this one guy doesn't really, he, you can kind of tell he's just, he doesn't want to be there. So yeah. if that one thing drags you down, then you have to like kind of, you know, you get everybody back up and just, not like a pep talk, but just like, you know, you got to bring everybody back up. So, yeah. yeah. And then like, obviously like other things, like it is a bit of a, like a financial thing. Like, you know, so you got to pay for the studio time. You got to pay for merch. You got to do this, that, and the other thing. You got to, you know, obviously buy gear, like, then little things like that. So, you know, it's, there are pros and cons to it, but, you know, if everyone's on the same page, then, um, then it makes everything 
uh, much easier. Yeah. What do you think the biggest pro to being in a band is? And like, is it the community of it? Is it just like the experience of playing on stage? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Like, I mean, if not for music, we would have never met. No, yeah. Like, I wouldn't even be meet, alive if it wasn't for music. Like, music exactly. legit saved so, my life. So, like, you, you know, you meet all, you make all these great connections with, you know, with people, whether, like, you know, I, I got to tour with a band from Connecticut. And, oh, um, like, you know, they, they, they came down to us. We went up to the, their place. We did a little, you know, just a couple shows, like, mainly like northeast but then when you know we keep going back up there to play with them they would come down and play with us and you know there's still some of like you know my my closer friends now and that was almost four years ago oh nice oh yeah and and you 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 know you meet so many people whether it's at shows um like just going to a show or playing shows with like bands you never heard of and then you're just like you kind of take that from there like hey you know, we're playing this show, like, you guys come out, and then they play a show, we go out for them, and then we end up playing more shows together, and just kind of, you know, building up a, it, to then now bring into the hockey thing, like, it, it, it ends up just becoming a team. Yeah, that's awesome, and I feel like that's really important, especially because when you go to concerts, and you go to shows, or whatever it is, you are with these group of people, and you're all, like, there for the same reason, like, you're all there for the experience, so, the crowd is all community, so it's, it's nice and warm when you hear, like, the band is, like, their own community of brothers or sisters or brothers and sisters, whoever's in the band. So that's yeah. super rad to know, like, and I'm sure also in a business sense, that community of people and connections you keep over the years also helps you when you need to sell tickets because that's another uh-huh. thing about being in a band. You have to sell tickets. Yeah. Yeah, and even, too, like, uh, with Painted Young, um this past August, it was probably, it was definitely our biggest show to date. And, you know, hopefully we'll be playing shows again soon, but, um, yes, hopefully, uh, oh hopefully. My gosh. but, but we ended up playing, I don't know if it definitely didn't open while you were still in Jersey, but, uh, the house of independence in Asbury, it's, it's, I've been to the stone pony plenty yeah. of times. So, so house of independence, it's, it's a couple minutes away from the pony, but it's, it's more, it's kind of, it's, it's a little bigger than the pony, not quite as big as Starland, but um, they have like all of like the big, a lot of, a ton, tons of national bands tour there. Or oh, dope, dope. So we actually ended up getting to play there with, um, we got, we got to open up for Drake Bell. Oh my God, that's so like, funny. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah I yeah, love yeah. Drake and Josh. Yeah, so like. <laughs> that's cool. You know, it, it, it was kind of a joke at first, but then the promoter ended up calling us like, hey, like, do you guys want to open this? And the guy was like, hey, can you guys do 50 tickets for this? I think we ended up selling, like, almost 200. Like, that ticket, oh, that, that, show, that show honestly sold itself. Like, we didn't have oh to go around God. like, hey, like, we're playing with Drake Bell. Do you want to come? People were like, I oh, yeah. Really Drake Bell. Like, I want, yeah, I want four or five tickets. And, and Oh, that's super awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a good time. That was, that, that was, that was a real yeah, fun one. I bet. So, obviously, playing Starland was, your, you, like you said, like, your biggest – stage to date do you have any other like really memorable shows you've played um definitely the drake bell show for one that was that was unbelievable um and um actually with my younger brother because you know he does his hip-hop stuff Mm -hmm. shout out um, shout out to uh love ian aka indy aka here maybe you'll want him on the next red trap yeah well you may you you gotta get him (laughs) <laughs> um, uh, he, through his music, he became very close with, uh, with Sammy Adams. Oh, dope, dope. So, um, you remember, you, mm-hmm. you remember, so. Yeah, who doesn't remember the Boston scene was like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boston, yeah. yeah. So, so we got to do a, like a little weekend run with him and, um, another artist, um, Huey Mack. Oh, dope. And, and we, it was only like three shows, but. The first show was at a, a venue called Toad's Place in New Haven, Connecticut. Okay. That, and that's basically like their, that would, for us, that would be Starland. Okay. Okay. And, you know, sea of people, like, it was definitely one of the bigger shows that I've got to play. Because um, my brother had, like, he did the whole, like, full band thing. Like, he had his DJ, but then 
I was playing bass and then he would have a drummer. So that's super we, rad. Yeah, did, I remember those yeah, pictures. <laughs> yeah, we did that. Um, and then even two with the stone pony, like Sammy would do a Christmas show every year and, and we would open for him. And, and actually Jeff was shooting at, I think the second one. Okay. Okay. I'll have to send yeah. photos and we'll like slide it in here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Like he, um, he got a really cool one where like he basically got everybody in the shot and where I was like, I kind of jumped and I was oh, like right cool. underneath the fan and it looks like the fan was the thing that like brought me up. Oh my God. That's yeah. so dope. It'll yeah, be that, like here, here. I don't know. Yeah, somewhere. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was that, um, those, those shows were always really fun. Yeah, that's super dope. I mean, I feel like it must mean more to you because you listen and love this music and then you play this music. So yeah. how does it feel like bringing what you love to life? It's, there's honestly no other feeling. It's like, it's just one of those, like, it's it's like you almost get a high from it. It's like, you know, you get like, especially like before the, the Drake Bell show, like, you know, like, I, I don't typically get nervous before shows, but, like, even with this one, I'm like, okay, like, there's, like, there's, like, a pretty decent amount of people here, like, you know, kind of breathe in, breathe out, um, and that kind of thing, and, um, but, yeah, there's, there's really no other feeling like it, it's, you know, just, and you, you've gone to plenty of shows, and, like, you just, like, you'll see, like, um, uh, I feel like I saw you, it was, uh, I remember Take Back Sunday, they do their, uh, their the shows like you hear yeah. everybody sing the the first little line of um mm-hmm. of make damn sure and like this like he, and he just literally silent he, and then he everybody, just like that like that and everybody yes. sing it like yeah like because like, yes. at that show at the the drake bell show um one cover the one cover that we did at that show like it, it was all originals but we we always throw one cover in because we have the track for it and everything oh that's we did, fun we, i love we that did, um, we did Fireflies. Oh, okay. And so like, everyone knows that song. Oh, and like, I, I got up onto the mic and I was like, I told the guy like, hey, like, can we bring all the house lights down? Like, and if everyone has a phone, just put up your flashlight. And we got everybody like, you know, waving their phones. Like, it was like the whole, like, you couldn't see any of the crowd from the stage. Like, the guy literally dropped all the lights. That and is so the rad. the crowd brought up the... Uh, the lights. I'll send that picture over to you. Yeah, that was, dude, like, that's so dope. That was one. That of the- actually is so amazing that you said that because you also attend concerts. So you've been to multiple Taking Back Sundays. You experienced that in the crowd. You've been to multiple Data Remember concerts. Like, do you remember when we almost died at a Data Remember at Skate and Surf because of after the Macklemore? crowd and we literally almost died? Like, we've been oh to those shows God. together, right? You, like, like, you I literally like. I remember vividly, like, basically, like, I, like, grabbed you by the waist, and Dude, we're just, we like, pushing through, just pushing through people, like, like, I didn't want you, like, getting socked in the face, like, Dude, I'm taking a couple crazy. hits and changes, okay. like, I feel like we have to preface this, okay, so if people don't know, and if you weren't there to experience it, so, skate and surf, throwback, back to the story how we met, um, no, this must have been yeah, no, no, no like, it was a two-day show. We met on day one, Macklemore yeah. and Data Member were day two. Yeah. Bamboozle yeah. and was always a, like a three or two-day three thing. Day thing. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so anyways, we've already met, so we're cool. We see each other again. We're like, oh, okay, cool, we're friends. So Macklemore performs. A Data Member was a headliner. Data Member was going last, so Macklemore was right before Data Member. Macklemore had just blew up, like really popular. This is when Macklemore is like Macklemore. Yeah, so like, everybody. Like, so if people don't know the New Jersey hardcore scene is very known like we are down like people in California don't understand the shit their concerts are so sad and weak and like not as fun like Jersey concerts oh I will never think anything is better like the crowds the energy the, the crowd surfing the mod like we all just get it there yeah so Macklemore comes to New Jersey and you think it's just gonna be chill like people are just gonna like listen to the music jump up and down no, these people are fucking going insane for Macklemore, like crowd surfing to him. He's not even hardcore. Yeah. So it was bananas. There was the crowd, like everyone's there to see Macklemore. The crowd was insane. Everyone was into it. Macklemore ends, now it's a day to remember. So you're like, everyone is already hyped up, and then it's like a day to remember. Day to remember was late. So then you have all these people that are just off of Macklemore, and then they're like, 
like panic, like where is a day to remember? So everyone's like crazy people. And I can I can handle myself. Like I go in yeah. the streets. I was like a girl. I don't give a shit. I get hit. Yeah. <laughs> that was probably the scariest crowd ever. Like Literally. you couldn't even move because then when a day remember finally showed up, it was like legit a yeah. bomb went off. Like pits so opened up, and then crazy. like I think there was at one point like you you like look up to me and you're like I gotta get out of here. Like I just I need like, to so, like I think like. I had, we had like a couple people like crowd surface up, but I literally held on to your arm yeah. like that the whole time until we Dude. got back over. And then we just like ran off to the side to just like get air. Cause it was Dude, like, I think we like legit, like, I guess a better way to put it is it was like a stampede, like yeah. literally it like was- Lion King, you're about to die. Like we're about to freaking die. And yeah the stampede is coming and it was like no and it's like, like you couldn't even enjoy it to remember because you were gonna freaking die so yeah like, you're gonna pass out so we've been through some crowds right so you come from the crowd of like the energy so for you then to like transition to stage and like be making people have this energy that must be a crazy experience it is like even too like just from like going to shows and just you know even if I wasn't like crowd surfing or anything like that, like I'm just, I'm just watching and like, I'm seeing everybody have so much fun. And I'm like, I just look, I'm like, you know, I, I want to do that. Like, I want to, I want to be able to like be on that stage. And then like, we're playing, we're playing a song and like, I look out into the crowd and then I just see you like tumbling over, like <laughs> over the security, like, and then you, you know, you high five the singer and you run back, you run back into the crowd and then you do it again. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I want, like, that's what I've always wanted out of, out of playing shows. Like, I just want, I just want people to have a good time. Yeah. So when you finally got that experience, did you feel like you had this moment where you're like, oh my God, I made my dream come true? Yeah. Like, uh, that, it, I mean, it wasn't the first dream. Like the first dream was like, obviously from playing hockey, like, Hey, I want to go to the NHL. Like I want to make it. And like, you know, that, that really didn't, uh, <laughs> that didn't work out too well, but, uh, but I mean, I still play, but it's just like one of those, like, like I could have a lot of fun doing this and like, I can help people either, you know, they're getting through, but they're having a bad day. They got dumped. They got, they got fired, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. But like, I just wanted people to have fun and like, and just, you know, it's, it's a release. Like I I said it before, it's, you know, all the emotions that you're going through, whether they're the highs or the lows, like going to a show, like I just, I want, I want to be part of what's making it better for you. I mean, I love that. I feel like the fact that like, I mean, if you love music, you're in the community and you make music, like you already have to be a positive person if you want to like put that out there in the world. So I think it's incredible. Like you want to make music just to make other people happy when I'm sure like we all go through bad times. Like for instance, music legit has saved my life without going to concerts and without like having these rock band. I was a rocker chicks so without having my rock bands. Like I went through really dark, dark times in my life. I almost killed myself. Like, but then I like music was always a constant where like everything else in life is not constant, but music I always had. Do you feel like you've had times like that that then led you to music and now you're so, like, that is your, like, playing music is your go-to to, like, you know, kind of like a therapy in a sense. Like, or do you just yeah. play just because it simply just makes you feel good in general? Yeah, like, I mean, I've had plenty of ups and downs, like, you know, whether it was because of bands or, like, during my time in bands where, like, you know, it, it, it got pretty rough uh, for me. So then... Um, I, I would always just go back and, you know, just even just listening to music, like, uh, but then, you know, the therapy part of it, just like, again, you know, rough week at work, whatever may happen, but I have a show on Friday night. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not holding back or like, and then even to like, from, from playing hockey, like that's another release. Like I could have a horrible day at work, this, that, and the other thing can happen, but like, I got a game tomorrow night and I'm not worried about anything else. Like, cause I'll go out, I'll play, whether it's a hockey game or play a show. And then we all just have beers after the game or during or after the show. And then we just call it a night. And it's, it's just one of those, it's one of those kind of things for, um, from a, from like a therapy standpoint. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So do you feel like you just were meant to play? Like, do you feel like looking back on your life and then like, I'm sure having your dad's support. So even having a good support leading yourself into music, do you feel like you are where you're meant to be? Um, yeah, I mean, like, obviously, you know, like, I'm, I'm not a perfect person, like nobody is, but like, you know, yeah. every and of day, course there's kinda... always growth. And I'm sure you want to do so much. But like, yeah, just a quick little snapshot. Yeah, like, you know, obviously, you know, nobody's perfect. But like, you know, basically, with music and, and hockey and everything else I have going, I, I just want to like, you know, push myself to be better, whether it's at work, relationship-wise, family-wise. Um, I, you know, I have my good days, I have my shitty days, but, you know, I, I've pretty much, I've, I've used music entirely as like, as just the getaway. Like, you know, if, if I have a bad day, I'll just listen to music. If I'm having a good day, then I'll, I'll write something and then, you know, and, and just take it from, you know, it's like a snowball effect, you know, yeah. it, it's, it only gets bigger. I love that. I really do. Like, that's so amazing. Oh, I just wish I could be like writing music and stuff, but I really appreciate the people that do because then they bring so much joy into my life. So the fact that someone like you writes the music and is so passionate about the music and plays the music and then you're like, can't wait to be in front of everybody. Like that drives a listener to be more invested in the music. So yeah. that is super amazing. I know that you also are a hockey goalie. And before we go into that segment, I just want to do a fun little, I guess like a rad chat rapid fire. If you've seen my story. I have, yeah. Um, yeah I just want to do a little like fun, fun little tidbits, like okay. quick, just super, whatever comes first to your mind. Oh God, I've been, I've been mentally preparing myself for this, but here we go. Let's yeah, hit the Okay, minute. so these are, it's not going to be totally a rapid fire because they're like more elongated questions, but they're just like simple little music yeah. inspired ones. Okay, oh, have you ever forgotten the song you're playing? Um, I have once, um, where like I, I kind of like, I go more so like, Hey, we're playing, like, if, if the song has, like, a longer name, like, we just shorten it to, like, you know, this, that, or whatever, and I'm, like, and I kind of forget for a second, like, oh, oh, oh okay, it's here, okay, like, you know, like, I, like, and then, like, I kind of listen back to, so like, oh, fuck, I, I fucked up there, 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 like, <laughs> yeah. and, um, full-on forgot how to play a song, though, no, I, I would always, okay. like, I would catch myself somewhere. Nice. Okay, favorite rock band? Oh, God. Um, I mean, I guess if it favorite band right now, it would probably okay. be, probably be Grayscale right now. Um, okay. I mean, I have them tattooed on my arm now. So oh shit, okay, put it up closer. We can do a tattoo oh. story coming soon. Okay, so um, I have the words uh, "Trade in my soul for your grief" and the number thirty-eight uh, in purple. Well, the song the song is actually called "In Violet." Okay. Um. The 38 is for uh, a friend of mine, uh, Anthony Severino. He, um, he passed away, mm -hmm. I believe it was, oh man, seven years, six years, six years now. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, he took his own life. But um, um, in, my, in my band, Idle Minds, we had a band before that called Safeguards. And um, the guitarist and vocalist, they played hockey at Jackson Liberty with Anthony. Cause, and Anthony mm -hmm. was bully as well. Okay. So Anthony, Anthony was the middle of three brothers, Tyler, who I actually just played with the other night and their dad, Anthony, and then Nick, they always used to come to every single show. Mm -hmm. um, they would always hang out afterwards. Like we would all like, go to Chipotle or Inkwell afterwards together. Um, and then when he passed away, some of our friends, they made, um, they made shirts because he had just mm -hmm. gotten the tattoo I know I'm going to butcher this, but it was, um, love the life you live, live the life you love. Mm -hmm. So he got that tattooed on him a little before he passed. So they ended up putting th those words on a gray t-shirt and oh, then awesome. and his last name and his hockey number on the back. And the, the screen print color was purple, mm -hmm. which is also my, my high school colors too. But nice. then, and his number was 38 and his number was 38. So then when the song, this, you know, like, and I, I, I don't want to say I know Grayscale personally, but uh, 
a friend of our, my brother and I actually, he shot a music video for them. Oh, and dude. I, I, I ran into them at a show. I was like, hey, like, do you guys know Maddie? And they were like, wait, Matt? Yeah, like he shot a video for us. We're like, yeah, he lives in my house. Oh, so funny. like, so when I saw them at Warp Tour, like I, I ran into Colin, their vocalist, and he's like, oh, yeah, how you doing? How's your brother? How's Maddie doing? Like, like, and, and then they ended up signing to Fearless Records, which is, you know, like one of the bigger labels. Yeah, in the team. big. And they put out a music video for this song uh, called In Violet. And the, um, it's basically like a mother is going to a funeral for what I assume was her daughter, like younger girl. She goes up to the casket and there's nobody in there. The church doors open and it's the daughter. Mm -hmm. And like the lyrics are like, bury me in violet. Um, um, but um, the, uh, in the chorus, it goes, dance the pain away, trade in my soul for your grief dance the pain away and I'll leave this wonderful place. And like, I watched that video and I like, it kind of choked me a little bit, but then. Oh, I know. I feel like you're going to yeah, make me so cry then, right now. So then, so then I saw Grayscale again at the Sad Summer Fest at the Pony. And I went up to Colin and I was like, I'm getting your words tattooed on my arm. And the next time I see you guys, I'll have it. And he was like, dude, like that. Did that he write it out? No, he didn't write it out. Oh, like okay. I probably should have had him write it, but that but then mm -hmm. um, a little- But that's super meaningful that yeah. you got such a touching thing yeah. on you and yeah, thank and you then, for sharing that story. Oh, of course. So then after my band played, after we played A House of Independence, Grayscale's first show on their first full US headliner was at House of Independence. And I found Colin and Nick, uh, their drummer afterwards. And I was like, yo, I did it. Oh, and then he's like, so holy shit, man, you actually did it. And then oh, like, that's so cool. and then some like some two older women women like came up and they were looking at it and they're like, oh, don't worry, we're just the moms. Like it was all their moms because they're from Philly, so they they okay. drove Raspberry for the show. And Colin was like, dude, like, I, like thank you, like you to have to have my words on your arm for the rest of your life. That's like that means a lot. And that's super dope. And, I mean, and it, it just like it was almost like a coincidence that the shirts that they made for Anthony they used purple font. The song is called In Violet. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's so precious i mean honestly i also have song lyrics tattooed on me but like yeah. to honor your friend in such yeah. a way that you're always going to remember yeah. him is yeah, like exactly. so touching yeah so obviously that makes sense why they're your favorite band <laughs> yeah yeah them i mean obviously they don't remember love devil Wars prada yeah um favorite and the next so keep up with the rad chat vibe favorite concert you've been to oh god or top one person that comes to your mind house party tour okay um the wonder years pierce the veil all time low a day to remember yeah well oh yeah yeah that was pierce the veil because they were like through the toilet paper and stuff right yep in the crumb yeah that was mm -hmm. a, uh, in trenton yep yep and then um I guess just favorite, like the first thing you think of when you think about music. When I think about music, oh man, uh, how much of a hole it's putting in my wallet now. <laughs> <laughs> true, um, true. Yeah, that and, you know, just, you know, like showing someone a song or like listening to, ba listening back to like the recordings that we're doing. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there like, damn, we did that. Like, that's awesome. Or even just looking back at photos from shows, like that show was so fun. Like this show was even better. Yeah. Just kind of going from there. Awesome. Okay. So I know that you also are a hockey drummer. I a hockey drummer. <laughs> hockey <laughs> goalie. I'm still yeah. in the music vibe. <laughs> um, hockey goalie. So that's also another really rad thing. Go Devils. But... <laughs> Oh, yeah. um so let's talk about that and how did you get into hockey talk us through that story so um i'm here in my bedroom and uh, if i were to look out my window we're the last house on a dead end and we had a neighbor um shout out travis that he um he played hockey and he just needed people to like uh to play with and practice with so um ian who's two years younger than me we threw him in goal because he was like, you know, like the young, the, the little brother, like, Hey, you go play goalie. And I was going to try and be like, you know, like a skater. It, it sucked for both of us. So then we ended <laughs> up switching. Um, and then it, 
kind of just went up from there. Like, you know, started out playing roller hockey in the streets, then um, playing travel roller hockey, uh, getting to travel like all over the East Coast to play in tournaments. And up in, in the high school when, or a little before high school when I had to transition over to ice hockey. And I've been a goalie ever since. Uh, I still am to this day. I had a game last night. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> How did you guys do? Uh, we lost. Oh, lost. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I it, 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 it happened. It was, we, you can't win with eight guys on the team. So, you know, it was a little rough. But, um, yeah, no, just played all through high school. Um, uh, played travel in between. Um, and uh, I, I didn't go to college and play, but um, just kind of playing men's league now, which is, it's it's fun. But uh, I also, uh, I'm coaching now too, which is really great. Oh, that's super um, dope. Yeah, I'm, I'm coaching uh, with the Jersey Shore Wildcats and Wall or helping out with their goalies. Um, and then this past season, I, um, I was helping out with, uh, with Rowan University with their division three team so oh wow dude that's so, super dope how is it yeah. to like educate on goalie it's um it's fun um like i i'm not really like the most technically sound goalie like especially with like with how the game has changed like the position of goaltending itself has changed so so much like from when i started and now it's like a not a completely different position but it's like there's a completely different way of how to do it okay so how did it for people that don't really know how has it like changed if you could like sum it up so um basically like when I started playing like Marty Berger was he is still the reason why I'm a goalie and I have an outline of him tattooed on me right here so there you go obviously you know New Jersey Devils legend hall of famer um the way that he played goalie was very um very uh, unorthodox, like kind of just like a do whatever you can to stop a puck with goalie with goaltending. Now it's a lot more um, technically sound. And in like, instead of like, you know, flailing over this way to make the save, like you just have to slide over and excuse me and kind of do it this way. Um, where like I, I can, I can watch a goalie in a game or in a practice and I see like, Hey, like, you know, you're kind of favoring your hand this way with it further back, keep it more out in front of you so you can actually see it in your peripherals. And it's much easier to, it's easier to make a save like this. Cause I can, if I'm looking at you, I still see my glove rather than seeing it back here where if yeah. I'm looking at you in the eye, I can't even see my hand. Yeah. So it's more so that. And then, um, also kind of through my current job, like I work up at a, the monkey sports store up in uh, Woodbridge. It's a hockey baseball across store. Oh, nice. Um, I, I'm also more so into the, um, the equipment side of it. Like, like, you know, um, almost, and even too with Rowan, like I wouldn't even call myself a, the goalie coach. I was kind of more like, like just a, a sec, another set of eyes for the defensive coach. But then I was also kind of the equipment guy. Okay. So, um, from the shop I used to work at, my buddy and I actually bought one of the skate sharpening machines. So I have that in my garage and oh, I like, I'll, I'll like buzz my own skates, like, you know, the night before a game. Um, and then with all the rowing guys, um, I would, I was basically like the team equipment manager where like after practices on Monday night, I would have another whole bag and everyone would just toss their skates in and I would sharpen them. And then, oh, no. guys, and then guys would ask me questions like, like uh, for sharpening, like it's, you'd think it's, there's only one thing and you just do it, but there's so many different things like how the, like, cause it's, you know, you're not on one blade, it's two. Okay. So there's like a little U shape and basically depending on how you skate your size, um, you know, people have different preferences. So if one kid comes up to me, he's like, Hey, like, I like my skates really, really sharp, but then I watch him in practice and he's kind of dragging, dragging along. I'm like, Hey, you know, you're kind of a bigger guy. Like you don't really need this sharper cut, go a little bit shallower. And then I do his skates there. And then the next night at practice, he's like, Oh wow. Like this feels so much better. Like 
I've I mean, how interesting that just by the sharpening of their skates, like, yeah, I yeah. never so, know that. Yeah, and then even too, like, um, the the sticks nowadays, like, basically all the sticks are kind of built for how a person shoots. Like, you know, they, they basically, like, the sticks all have um, a flex, and they flex in different parts of the stick for depending on how you shoot. I watch a kid shoot, and I can see – hey, you're using too stiff of a flex, drop down to something a little softer and then maybe try a different curve because you like to shoot off of this part of your blade, but the curve that you're using, you should be shooting on a different spot of your blade. And I could see that. And then like, you know, like, hey, like he uses what you should be using. Take his stick and just, you know, take a couple shots with him and practice, see how it feels. You know, and some guys are like, oh, you know, that works. Or like, I think I'm okay with this, but like, you know, I appreciate that. Like, I never thought about that. Yeah. And then guys will always ask me like little, like little, little stuff like that. Just like, Hey, like how often should I sharpen my skates? Oh, okay. Um, it's typically every six to eight hours. Uh, you know, you guys have a practice little, Monday, like, Wednesday. Yeah. Like you have practice Monday, Wednesday, and then you have two games over the weekend. After that practice Monday night, you should probably get your skate sharpened. Mm-hmm. And then just, you know, little stuff like that. Yeah. Do you think that knowing so much about the equipment and all of that not only helps you teach, but helps your personal game? As a player, um, a little bit. Like, um, because I also like not only just playing goalie. Like, I'll like I'll skate out like as like a defenseman. So like okay. I'll um, I kind of see it more with like, um, the biggest change I've seen in even also just in working are the sticks and the skates. Okay. So, like, you know, if you're not comfortable in your skates, you're not comfortable in anything. Yeah. So, you know, if I see a kid that's got, like, a really skinny foot, he shouldn't be wearing a wider skate. I'm like, hey, like, your foot, I think you need this skate because you're blistering up and your foot's moving around inside the skate. You should be in something a little smaller. Or, yeah. um, and then... And then even too, like it comes into like, you know, taking care of the equipment, like, Hey, the rivets that are holding your thing on are completely rusting out. You have to take out the footbed and like air your skates out. Like, you know, cause I keep taking all your skates to work and I'm like re riveting them just so they don't fall apart on you. Like yeah. just little stuff like that to like try and take care of them. That's cool. Did you feel like, so you grew up kind of knowing you were like, you just grew up as the goalie after you and your brother switched spots. How how is it year after year of like improving your game and just being the goalie and like the, all the pressure is on the goalie? Yeah, um, I mean, I saw it a lot more um, in high school, probably like not as much now because like I don't want to say the games don't mean anything, but it's like it's men's league. Like we're just we're playing and then we hang more out in the parking lot for an hour and just drink beers. Like yeah. That's, more but for fun more, now. Exactly, yeah. It's more fun now. But, like, playing travel and, and high school um, when I was younger, I definitely saw it more um, – like, my my freshman year, I sat – there was a, a senior goalie in, in front of me, but it was the first time that my coach had two goalies. Mm. So, like, you know, compared to – between the two of us, like, the senior, he was more so, like, a newer goalie, and I had a lot more of, like um, – more of like a background in it. Mm-hmm. So the coach would always go to him like, Hey, like if you're off, like I'm, I'm putting in the kid, like I'm putting in the freshman, like, mm-hmm. and I won't even think twice. Like, I don't care if you're a senior, but yeah. if he's got the hot hand, I'm going to play him. So then I saw it more the, the next year I was the only goalie on the roster. So like, not only did I have to play every game, but I had to um, keep myself, you know, not nec- not just in shape, but like just like the whole stamina of it. Because like, as a forward or a defenseman in a game, like you're only on the ice for anywhere from thirty seconds to a minute, and then you're off. And then you know, like there's a line change. Yeah. The goalie, like, unless you get pulled, like you don't get off the ice. So you're obviously out there for every second of every game. I have to. Then I had to. Then you know keep up on my stretching um you know like running like you know just little little things because like um you know if I if I didn't stretch properly and I have to 
do a full split to make a save and I pop my knee out, like there's nobody else behind me. I have to play on basically one knee and that takes out a lot of my game. Cause obviously with a, as a goalie, like you need your knees. Yeah. But, like if I was like fatigued in any way, like I would try and take care of it uh, as soon as I possibly could. Like if I like, yeah. you know, got dinged up in practice, like I, I'd be sure to like ice both my knees, like, you know, my, my shoulder, uh, just, you know, like, just taking care of yourself. That's mm -hmm. really what I saw um, more so, or what I had to do when I was younger. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I still take care of myself enough uh, now, but like, just, you know, not quite as much as I did then. Yeah. Do you think, now bringing that up, do you think the conditioning your body in such a way and making sure you're really like taking care of yourself was there anything you specifically did besides just like running did you eat differently did you make sure you like went to the gyms a gym a certain amount of times a week how did you really condition your body um uh in all honesty like i'm not really much of like a like a weight person like a like right. going into a gym and just you know chucking on weights and just lifting <laughs> as heavy as i could yeah um I would do like, you know, yeah. yeah, like I would, I would do like little, like smaller stuff. Um, I saw a lot more of my conditioning in all honesty on the ice. Okay. Um, so you just know, practice. Like, just practice. Yeah. And then like during the summer, like I was doing all these goalie camps that were like for each month of the summer, like they were like a week long. So literally Sunday to, to Saturday, like I'm on the ice, you know, like, it during that week I'm on the ice like twice a day running in between or like in the morning beforehand um everyone eats a lunch before we do the second session where like the first part of that session on ice like it's going to be all skating like and just you know working your feet you know getting a good sweat in and then you eat and then the second ice session is where guys are shooting they're shooting pucks and you're, you're also like working in different drills. So like this one drill, like, you know, they're going to dump the puck around. You're going to stop the puck behind the net, pass it back up the glass to another shooter. You're going to get back in the net, in the net and set yourself up and he's going to shoot. So you want to make sure that after you make that pass, you then get back into position or um, just little, like little things like that. So just, you know, each, each, um, part of the ice was like a different uh, station. So that drill, this section's doing this thing. This one here is doing a smaller room thing. Over there is another thing. And then over here is another thing. That's so, awesome. It's, you know, you must be really passionate about it if you still do it for fun now. So that being said, what are your favorite, like what makes you still love hockey? Like why do you still want to play it? What is the thrill of it for you? Um, the thrill, it's, um, it's honestly just kind of having fun. Like, you know, I, I go, I go to the rink, you know, you know, I, I play with my brother and my neighbor and a couple of our other buddies. Um, just, you know, seeing all the guys, like it's fun. I mean, now, like with the whole COVID thing, like some of the guys that I play with are older and, you know, they, they may be more at risk, so they're not playing, but these guys are, yeah. um, you know, so I see all the guys at the rink, you know, we have, we have, we have fun, you know, if we win, we lose, uh, or even if it's just like, like an open skate, like open hockey, like, you know, you're just going there to have fun. Um, and then you just, you hang out in the parking lot afterwards or, you know, last night after the game, we went to the one guy's house and he had a bonfire, like, oh, you know, nice. like socially yeah. distanced bonfire. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. <laughs> That's really cool because I feel like I used to play sports when I was younger and I never really bonded with the people. Like I just, I always did play sports, but then when I hit high school, I was more focused on like going to concerts or I was working really young. So I'd go to work. And so I never bonded with, I, I, I mean, when I was younger, I remember the bond I had with the team, yeah. but how is it to have that bond with your teammates? Um, you, like even like going back to like when we were younger, it was like, you know, you show up to the rink, you know, you see all your friends, like your, your teammates, you have a good practice and then everybody hangs out afterwards. Um, going to tournaments, you know, like, you know, we have a tournament down in DC, so we're staying in a hotel for three days. Like, obviously we're just going to run amok in the hotel and, and just, you know, destroy everything in sight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but we, Very you know, we rock have and roll. Exactly. Yeah. Like, 
Um, but in the connection that you have with your teammates, it's like, it's even the same thing, you know, like being in a band now, it's like, you know, it's not all about the one stud that you have. If you have 15 guys that are, that are good as a unit, you're going to beat the team that has the one stud. Mm-hmm. And then I like how you put that as a unit. In, like you can't exactly, yeah. have a team then, without it, the team and you can't have a band with just one person. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like the band, it's not all about this guy here. It's not all about this guy here. Like you're all in it together and you know, you have the 15 man team of all average guys against the team that has the one really, really good guy. If you shut down the one good guy, then, you know, it's game over. Like, you know, you're going to win that game. And, um, and then in, in the whole music thing too, it's like, you can't do it without a team. You have your, your bandmates, you have the support system behind you. You have, you know, your fans, you have, you know, managers or, you know, like, ma- like PR teams, like it's, you you can't, you can't do it all yourself. Like you, yeah. you need to have a team. I think that's super yeah. awesome that both your career traits, like all kind of intersect back to each other. Like you have a team on both ends They're different teams, but they all like your strengths of having both these things, like the, the band and then the hockey, like they all kind of come back into like intertwine in each other in like what the assets they are as, to you as a person would you agree no 100 percent, 100 percent. my brother said the same thing um he he was actually on a podcast a few years ago um oh my god it was called purpose of the youth okay and it, it was actually with a guy um uh bob a as he liked to be called and he was actually out in california oh nice. so so and he asked him the same thing it was like mm-hmm. Um, I guess I my question honestly, was good. Yeah, he, I think he, he honestly answered it the same exact, my brother answered it the same way. It was like, you can't do it without a team. Yeah. Like, you know, you could have the one really good guy, but then the 15 average guys, and, you know, that's, that's how you're going to do it. You, you need to have the team behind you. Yeah, I really love that you, you um, really put an emphasis on that, too, because it just shows the kind of, hum- like, how humble a person you are and how... I think I personally believe like no one is anywhere without help or like, you know, without something along the way, like, you know, maybe someone just told you a really nice comment and then it thrived you for the rest of the day. Like I, I'm a personal believer that like I'm nowhere without help and others and positivity. So I love when I talk to somebody and they just exemplify the same traits. It really would make me want to go listen to your band or make me want to go see you play hockey. So I think that's really cool when you, when other people give respect to other people. I think that's a really rare trait nowadays. So yeah. I really respect that. And the fact that like both things you do, both involve team, it's mm-hmm. pretty spectacular. I do yeah. also want to ask you, so this also kind of intersect both your things as well. So I actually like, I'm from New Jersey. I was a football. I'm a pro football. Like football is my number one sport. I'm a freaking crazy you're, you're pack, football person. Yeah, go Pats. But um, so it's funny though because New Jersey has no football team, right? Technically, they play in New Jersey, but there's no yeah, teams. the Jets and Giants. But and meanwhile, I don't even like those teams. I'm a Patriots fan. Yeah. But there's no team that has a New Jersey name besides the New Jersey Devils. Like, that is all we have is the Devils. All we have now, yeah. So it's like, to me, I got into hockey pretty late. I don't know why. I never really, like, I was just always focused on football, but I never thought about hockey until I moved to California and my girlfriends were going to a lot of Devils games. And I was like, you know what? Like, that would be so rad to go to a hockey game. So when I came home for Christmas, my friend had booked, like, to go to a hockey game so I went to my first Devils game we were pretty freaking close we had really good seats like yeah super low yeah but here and it was the the incredibest experience of my life so like you know you go to a football game and like basically the way I would put it is like you know they snap the ball they hand it off to the running back he gets tackled the play was like maybe six seconds long no 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 it's not like that well no no but but you know (laughs) but it for the most part, it's it's basically like just it's a lot of stops and starts. With hockey, Unless it's they pass really, it and they're running. Exactly, yeah, and it, but but then with hockey, it's like 
literally back and forth action mm-hmm. the That's entire true. time. That's true. Yeah. So like, I and agree. seeing a game live, like you, you really, you see that and you're like, whoa, like. It's so, so when I first saw the Devils and we won, actually the first time I saw them. So it was like mm-hmm. pandemonium. Oh my God, it was the most exciting yeah. experience ever. I'm going to like post the link of my video of what I reacted because it was like so fucking incredible. Yeah, and I feel, like I, I feel like I so, saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, I was so excited. I then went to like the Devils game later that week, and we won against the Blackhawks that night, which was yeah. incredible. Anyways, long story short, I feel like hockey is so you're right, like high energy, the checking, like I maybe it's just me, but like football is my number one, and it's a high impact physical sport. Yeah. Then hockey is also like a physical, like they're checking each other in fights. And I also love the UFC. I love all aggressive sports. I don't know what that says about me. Yeah, but you're but, but you're not you're not the aggressive type. <laughs> I'm just so opposite. But I don't know. It's super. Maybe just because it's the thrill of watching it. But my yeah. point of this whole ramble I went on is that being in the crowd in a hockey game is so incredible. It's like being in a concert. It's so incredible. So yeah. the fact that you've experienced both and then you also do both, like how is it to be like playing a hockey game like how it's it's so incredible you you love hockey you play hockey you love music you play music this this is such a crazy thing that both your things you do are just so fucking incredible yeah like it i mean obviously not as much now just because like men's league like nobody stays to you know like nobody's watching the games like for the most part they're really late but like the high school games like my high school like i think i graduated with like 120 kids and there was maybe 500 in the whole school. Okay. But, like, but if we were playing our Friday night games were at 8.20 every Friday, like half the school would pack out the rink to see our game. And like, I, I try and I like, I, I don't really like make eye contact with anybody in the crowd. Like, or I never did where like, um, but everybody, like if you, like if I, if I make a big save, like, like, uh, everyone would chant, like, you know, they'll chant my name or they're like, here's Ray Ray. Like, you know, just everybody's like, um, everybody's into it. Like, um, and, and even too, like that made, that made us as a team want to play better. Cause like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to get embarrassed in front of like half your school, like, and you lose like eight, nothing, but like you want to win that game, you know, whatever the score is, but like, and then you come into school Monday and everyone's like, Ray, like, if you weren't there, like, we're not winning that game. Like, you you carried us that game. Like, that was such a crazy the, – the last five minutes was insane. Like, this, that, and the other thing. Like, oh, that save you had on the breakaway. Like, everything there was – and I'm walking around school and I'm just like, hmm, this is, like, it's kind of cool. Yeah. And then, but then, like, but then they would say like, that. Okay. Yeah, but then they would just – they would say that to me, like, in – in school and I'm just like hey I mean like I, I I'd play it like it really wasn't a big deal I'm like hey like you know that's what I'm supposed to do like you know thank you for supporting but like, it's just like it's my know, job yeah exactly like it was just one of those things but that's super fun to have like in that sense like that gratitude of like oh my god like they remembered my save and like yeah you know exactly. a lot of pucks are coming your way Especially in high school too, yeah. Like I think yeah. I averaged, I averaged like at least over forty probably every game. Oh wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so Did you I, ever I, have I, a I, bad I, experience? Like got hit with a puck or anything? Uh, like I mean, I've gotten like, like hit like in a spot where like the pad wasn't there, or, like so like I would take some on the ribs, like my collarbone. Um, I do remember one kind of bad goal I let up. Um, a guy kind of just like he just flicked flipped it in from like the red line and I got my body in front of it, but it took a r- real crazy bounce and went like right over my glove. And the, the guy basically shot it from center ice. And like, mm. it was just one of those, like, just do that and stop it. But then it took a little <laughs> back bounce and went in. Oh, and, like it was on the side of like that school's fans. So like, they let me hear it the entire game. Like, that that was a gimme. That was a gimme. Like sports that, fans are nuts. They'll tell yeah. you. Oh yeah. Do you feel like also too because like 
if people don't like your music and if people think you do a bad job, do you think that also helps you? Because you can, you honestly feel the energy so you can play off that. Like, oh, I'm not really doing a good job because of the crowd. Like, I need to get better. Or like, oh, like, we got to like put more emphasis into the song because the crowd's not feeling it. Do you feel like you feed off of the crowds? Oh, uh, yeah, no, 100%. Like, you know, with the hockey thing, like, you know, if, if, we're, if we're playing a game and I give up a goal, I, I, like, I, I, don't, I don't let it bother me where, like, you know, I'm throwing a stick into the bench. Like, I'll just, like, I take a little skate around to the corners and just kind of, like, you know, the, the first thing that comes to my head is, like, okay, stop the next one. Just, you know, make the next save. Um, mm-hmm. Where, like, you don't necessarily see it, um, like, in, in the music thing. Like, you could tell, like, if a crowd's just, like, you know, like, I don't want to say not into it, but they're just, like, they're kind of there. And, like... Yeah. Like, waiting like, for the next band kind of thing. Yeah, like, that or even, like, like, it's kind of a meme now, but it's just, like, you're playing a show with, you know, whatever band it is. And then, like, after you play a member of whatever band you're playing with, they come up to you and you're like, yo, nice set, man. And then, like, you... Like, I, I would remember stuff where, like, you know, like, I see the one guy at the merch table, and then he, like, steps outside for, like, a 25-minute cigarette break during our set. And then he's like, oh, nice set, man. I'm like, yo, you didn't even oh, see Oh, got you. Like, you know he didn't even watch. Exactly, yeah. It's stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, so... Awesome. Yeah, um, you know, it comes with, like, the good and the bad. Like, everybody, nobody yeah. will come up to me and come up to us after a set and be like, you guys played, like, shit. Like, Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, like... You know, if there was, like, a technical difficulty or whatever, like, they'll, we'll just be like, oh, you know, shit happens, whatever. It's, yeah. Just on to the next. That's a good thing yeah. that you don't let it bother you. If, if you miss a goal or maybe you know you didn't have a personal good set, you're yeah. just like, okay, it's on to the next. That's a really good mentality to have. Exactly, you yeah. It affect you. Yep, it's always just on to the next one. That's awesome. So before we wrap up, I want to just ask, like, in music and in hockey, is there anything you want to debunk, like myths or, like, things people get wrong about them? Um, I thought that would be a fun little question. So I guess there's – I guess I have one for each. Um, okay. For the hockey one is um, goalies don't skate at all. You just stand there the whole time. Okay. Where – the goalie actually actually does more skating than any of the guys on the ice. Hmm. And we have to do it in a lot more gear and we have to move a completely different way than how a normal. That's true. Does. Yeah. Then, give it for, give it up for the goalies people. Yeah, and, then, and then we're also the ones that like, if somebody's going to take a slap shot from the blue line, your defenseman just going to be like, oh, get out of the way of that. Where we're the ones that were, we're, literally vol- we're voluntarily sitting there just waiting for a 75 mile an hour shot to probably yeah. hit you in the head or that something. is true you guys are way more susceptible to get in the bean yeah yeah well they everyone says goalies are a little weird so you know we have our quirks you know i have mine but like not all goalies are weird like that. yeah well uh, that's good that's one, a good one to debunk yeah i guess the other one would be um i don't know like I, I guess, like, in, like, musical memes, like, it, like, you see the thing where it's, like, band kicks out the bassist, but they never even had a bassist. Oh, okay. Like, it was, like, one of those things, like, like, the bassist, like, doesn't even matter. Like, band takes promos without bassist, but... Mm-hmm. But That's like, how you know it's someone that really doesn't know music because maybe you you will always recognize the guitar, but if the bass isn't there, you will know it's not there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's a good one. Yeah. So, I, so I, I, guys, I basses do matter. Bas- all basses matter. Exactly. Yes. And all, and, and all goalies matter. Yes. Hashtag it. That's a fun one. I just thought that'd be a fun little question because I'm sure there's so many things you probably come across being a goalie or being um, in a band, especially like all the misconceptions there could be. So that's cool. That's good to know. No, 100%. Yeah. Is there anything you want to promote you have coming up? I know with COVID, um, especially you being in entertainment and being in sports really got impacted. So obviously our hearts go out to the industries 
we um, hope you're doing okay and hopefully you're still trying to stay busy like at yeah. home trying to do what you can. I know that there really isn't much going on, but is there anything you do have to promote or upcoming things that you um, have? So, I mean, with Painted Young, um, I guess I could plug our Instagram. It's Painted yes. Young Band on Instagram. And we'll on tag Twitter. it. Should be the same thing. Um, we wrapped up a uh, shooting music video. Um, oh, no. Ago ago. Um, also, um, I, we have an EP that's in the works. Um, we're actually getting ready to schedule um, our next um, session to, um, to, you know, or whenever we're going to go to the studio next to finish that up. Um, that's you know, exciting. Dropping, dropping the music video and it's a new single. So like, if you go on Spotify and you listen to us, like that was all stuff that Chris did before Bailey and I had even joined. Okay. So like this new wave of stuff is like, if, if you listen to the new stuff compared to what's already on Spotify, you'll be like, this is not the same band. Like this is okay. a different. Uh, when you guys promote the, when the music video drops and when the EP drops, let us know and we'll promote it. Absolutely. You'll, you'll be my first call. Yes, I, I need, better. I need, I need some more LA connections. Yes, I, more, I, I got you. I got you. Of course. Awesome. So that's coming up with Painted Young. And then um, can anyone join your men's league if anyone in New Jersey is watching and want to join a hockey league? Uh, I mean, yes, you know, it, dep- it depends if, if we're going to, like, you know, depending on if we'll have a, a team for next season. Like, it, it is kind of pricey. Now, like, yeah. the rinks just have to make the money back from clo- being closed for so much so for so long because of COVID. Um, so people can look into it. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jersey Shore Arena. There you go. Awesome. And then do you have a specific league if people want to come watch you or support you? If, if anybody – if oh, my, man, if anybody comes to our games, then what are you doing with your life? Because hey, we, 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 like we play at, like, 10 o'clock at night. Like, Some nobody – Nothing other to do. It's COVID. So if you guys are playing, hey, it's yeah. some entertainment. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I'm so thankful you came on the podcast. It's been, I've known you for so long. You know, I have love for you, respect for you. I love what you do. I really appreciate your time today. I know it's been crazy, but guys, you have to check out the Painted Young, just Painted Young. Yes. Um, check them out. Music coming soon. And then if you have any hockey questions, if, especially if you teach, you can also hit Ray up. So thank you. Any other like advice or last parting words you have for either industry? Um, honestly, just, I mean, in today's times, uh, it's kind of one of those, uh, eh, fuck it kind of things, but, um, you know, just have fun with it. That's cause that's really all that, matters in both uh senses so you know just have fun with it and um and you know that's i guess that's really yeah. it. hey fun. that's okay just have fun awesome yeah, exactly. well thank you ray we're gonna tag your post somewhere down here um thanks so much for coming on hey th- thank you for having me it was literally this was a long time coming yes it was we've been talking and, about it for so long and it and it, and it even too it's been even longer like even just since we sat down and talked so i know so it's it's just fun to kind of talk to my friend <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's it's been it's been a, wh- a long while i love you love what you're love doing you too and, and then uh, when i'm able to travel back you know i'll be hitting you up where we got we got to do have you been to inkwell yet since no. been, that i'm i'm taking you to inkwell i'm getting you a dutch coffee and okay you guys heard it here first so if ray doesn't take me we have a document of this <laughs> here I'll, I'll pinky promise it via zoom yes there i know you go. know i love my pinky promises you can't really see mine though you, know, cool. <laughs> you gotta put it like one there you go so there you go <laughs> but, Inc- awesome well thank you so much again and bye guys Th- thanks for having me again it was a blast yay bye